Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the NBX 5040 CNC router machine from Nemo Labs. This machine was designed to be a more affordable version of their NBS 6040. It uses DM542 drivers with 76mm NEMA 23 stepper motors to drive 1605 ball screws between the 20mm linear tubes on the Y axis, as well as linear rails and a 1605 ball screw on the X axis, and linear rails with a 1204 ball screw on the Z axis. The frame is made of thick heavy gauge aluminum plate and extrusions and can be completely assembled in roughly 20 minutes to form a max work volume of 500 by 400 by 95 millimeters. Nemo Labs also developed their own trim router to use as a spindle with this machine, which is rated for 710 watts, so it has a lot more power compared to stock spindles provided with other machines that I've reviewed on this channel recently. And it has an adjustable speed range of 7000 to 30,000 RPM, as well as an ER11 collet chuck and a soft start feature. They also have an upgrade kit with a 1.5 kilowatt liquid cooled spindle that's available to purchase separately. The controller comes with a touchscreen display and SD card slot for working offline, as well as an emergency stop switch and connection ports for an MPG, a fourth access, and a laser module. After everything was wired up, I made sure the gantry was moved to the back of the frame, and then tightened the screws on that end before turning the machine on and using the offline controller to move the gantry to the front of the frame, and then tightening the screws in that location to ensure the frame is square with the gantry. Then I installed the dust shields on the sides and checked the homing sequence and router.
With everything assembled and confirmed to be working, I installed a 20 degree V-bit in the chuck and connected the machine to Candle to start the first engraving test. Candle is a software that's used for sending G-code and controlling CNC machines, and it's provided with this machine on a USB drive. After loading the test file that was also on the USB drive, I used the controls in Candle to jog the spindle to the origin over the workpiece and zeroed its position using a sheet of paper, then started the engraving. After seeing the first attempt work fine, I made two more passes to check precision. It looked like it was working alright, so I moved on to testing the Z-probe. This is a sensor that can be used to zero the spindle on the Z-axis more accurately than using a sheet of paper. It rests on top of the workpiece and the alligator clips are connected to the end mill. After setting the exact thickness of the Z-probe in candle, I click the Z-probe button to start the process. With the spindle zeroed, I disconnected the Z-probe and engraved the same test file again. This time the engraving was cut a little deeper and had less burrs on the edges. Satisfied that the machine is working as it should be, I moved on to creating my own G-code. For this I like to use Easel Pro. Unlike Candle, which is just a G-code sender, Easel is an all-in-one web-based CAD and CAM software that has everything you need to connect your machine and design and create your own projects. For the next test, I drew up some simple pine boxes with lids that will have epoxy and oak inlays. Easel provides a variety of options for material and end mill choices, as well as machine presets for different materials and bits to help get you started with minimal risk of damaging your machine but I found the presets to be very conservative for other machines that I've used in the past. Since I'm using a spindle with a suitable amount of power this time, I chose settings that would produce a reasonable chip load for the 1 8th inch 2 flute end mill that I used, which were 70 inches per minute for feed rate, 1 16th inch depth of cut per pass, and 12,000 RPM. At these settings it should take roughly an hour to finish.
After the oak inlays were cut out, I rounded the edges slightly with some sandpaper, applied a thin layer of wood glue, and tapped them into the mortises. After they dried, I clamped them back on the spoil board to remove the waste and engrave a couple more logos with a 20 degree V bit. I filled the engravings with a mix of epoxy and charcoal powder, then I sanded the excess off, chamfered the corners, and finished the boxes with a few coats of tongue oil. With the boxes finished, I imported a 3D model of a dragon into easel and set it up to carve a small relief into a piece of MDF in two stages. First, I removed the bulk of the material with a 1 8 inch 2 flute end mill using the same settings that I used for the pine boxes. And then I finished the detail with a 20 degree V bit. Next, I wanted to try machining metal, so I imported a DXF template of a 30-tooth number 40 sprocket to cut out of 6061 aluminum. I didn't have a quarter inch thick plate for this, so I laminated two pieces of 1 inch thick plate together with JB Weld. It won't actually be put to use, it's just for testing and demonstration purposes. Aluminum requires a similar chip load as most wood, so I stuck with the same settings that I use for the pine boxes, except I lowered the depth of cut to 0.03 inches just to be sure that I didn't overload the router and break something on the first attempt. I use quite a bit of cutting oil to keep the end mill cool and prevent the aluminum from gumming up on it, and place cardboard over the spoil board to help make the mess easier to clean up. I've seen RPM recommendations for aluminum ranging from 8,000 to 15,000, so I stuck with 12,000 to see how that worked. I think it might have been a bit too high because I had an issue with the aluminum overheating and sticking to the end mill despite the cutting oil. 
This is the fifth machine that I've reviewed so far, but I'm still relatively new to this, so if there are any pros watching who have any tips for milling aluminum, then feel free to share them in the comments. After the machine was finished doing its thing, I used a jigsaw to cut the tabs holding the sprocket to the waste material and then cleaned it up with a file and sandpaper. For the most part this turned out pretty good. I can see some areas where the bit didn't leave as good of a finish as it should have, but this is a good first attempt. The router has plenty of power and the machine is more than rugged enough for this type of work, so it's just a matter of investing in better end mills and fine tuning the settings with a bit more testing to get the best result. I'm quite happy with how this machine has performed so far. The build quality is excellent and I didn't have any problems with assembly or connecting to and controlling it with software. With the 710 watt trim router, this has easily become my new favorite machine in the workshop. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. There's also a link in the video description in case you're interested in getting one for yourself. But that's it for this video folks. Thanks for watching and take care.